Hello, and welcome to Polk Street United Methodist Church. My name is Dr. Mark Welsh. I'm the senior pastor here at Polk Street, this historic congregation of 131 years old. Whether you worship with us here in our sanctuary, online, or in our TV ministries, we are so blessed to be able to worship with you. Matthew 18.20 says, Wherever two or three are gathered in my name, there am I with them, Jesus said. We claim that promise, that wherever we are, whatever we're doing, we can lift up our hearts to the Lord together as God's people. So thank you for worshiping with us today. We pray that God does something special in your life as we lift up our hearts to the Lord. God bless you, and may we lift up our hearts in worship. Hello, and welcome to our Monday Thursday service here at Polk Street United Methodist Church. I hope that you are gathering around with your family as we worship the Lord on this holy Thursday. You're invited to get some bread of your choice or some food of your choice and get a drink of your choice for later in the service. This will not be a holy communion service as we are practicing social distancing and respecting the ritual. However, this is the love feast that we celebrate tonight. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we have all come to this place either virtually or physically frail and broken in a world of uncertainty sickness death and isolation we look for healing through this restorative service of old it is in this love feast where adversaries become friends friends become neighbors and the christian family embraces all but because of social distancing not literally physically but spiritually and symbolically before we share the blessings of food and drink, we'll be praying, we'll be singing, we'll be reading the scriptures, and Reverend Kevin Decker will bring us a wonderful witness of the love feast. And this is modeled just as the first Christians did in the ancient times. The history of the love feast as a celebration was born simply out of love, generosity, and fellowship. It's a beautiful service. Christians today can be grateful for the celebration by the Moravians and also for the vitality given by Charles Wesley. The feast is appropriate for any Christian setting and can nourish the hearts, souls, and the minds of Christians in so many ways. At its most basic, the love feast is an experience of warmth and sharing a remembrance of the early church. At its most symbolic, the love feast is a means of God's grace that is experienced in the fellowship with God and with each other. But the simplest explanation of the love feast, to which one can respond when asked, is that it's a way to remember Christ's presence on earth and to celebrate with gratitude the spirit of God's love in us, with us, and for us. So tonight on this Holy Thursday, this Monday Thursday, we celebrate this love feast with you. So let's begin as we always begin with a word of prayer. Let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you that on this holy night we can gather on the internet, we can gather on TV, and we can come together, maybe not physically, but spiritually with millions if not billions of Christians around the world and to remember your sacrifice, your love for us, your blessing on this night. So Lord, may the attitudes of our hearts, the words of our mouth, the food that we eat, may it all glorify you and bless us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. As we're apart, we're going to sing together at this opening hymn, Blessed Be the Tie That Binds. Like to thine, 
And if you'll please join us as we sing John Wesley's grace to the tune of the old doxology. Let us join together in Charles Wesley's Love Feast Prayer. Father of earth and heaven, your hungry children are fed. Your grace be to our spirits given, that true immortal bread. Grant us and all our race in Jesus Christ to prove the sweetness of your pardoning grace, the manna of your love. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. <clears throat> Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture tonight comes from 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 to 21. And now hear the word of our Lord. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world, that we might live through him. This is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is made complete in us. This is how we know that we live in him, and he in us. He has given us his spirit. And we have seen and testified that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in them, and they in God. And so, we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever loves and lives in God, God is in them. This is how love is made complete among us, so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world, we are like Jesus. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear, because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. We love because he first loved us. Whoever claims to love God, yet hates a brother or sister, is a liar. 
For whoever does not love their brother and sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. And he has given us this command. Anyone who loves God must also love their brother and sister. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please be seated at home. The love feast which we are celebrating on this night is a time to gather with family and friends to share in a simple meal of bread and a drink of your choice. But more than that, to share Christ's love with those around us. It's a time to deepen our relationships with those that we love and care for. As we remember on this night that the Lord was betrayed on our behalf. One of my favorite TV shows is Blue Bloods. It's about a three-generation family of police officers in New York City. Now, my favorite time of the show is when they all gather around, and it's in every episode, they gather around the family table for a Sunday meal together. And they always say the blessing. Uh, take turns rotating around that table. Now, that's very rare for something coming out of Hollywood to actually have a prayer or blessing before a meal in a TV series weekly. One thing that this show touches my heart about is when I was growing up as a child and our family of six gathered around the kitchen table for every meal. And we would rotate who would say the blessing. Now mine was always the same thing every time. Lord, thank you for this food and bless those who are traveling. I don't know why I would throw that in. And then we would eat. And uh, each one had their turns. But as we ate and shared that meal together, we would also share our life and sometimes things that were deep within our souls. And I know my family grew closer together and more intimate with each other in our love for one another and for Christ during those meal times. I still to this day value a meal, whether it's with a church member, a friend, and especially a family member. When I arrived here in 2006, I began receiving calls almost monthly from Ben Bruckner, a longtime member of this church, and now he's with the host of heaven at this time. But when Ben and I would go eat, we'd usually go to OHMS down the street, and we would learn more and more about each other's lives. We would share about the church, our families. We'd talk about his business. He would ask about things in the church and how things were going in my life. And I really had a deep, close, personal relationship with Ben Bruckner through those many, many meals we shared together. You know, Jesus' ministry on earth was built around the meal table in many occasions, if you'll look through the scriptures. He was constantly being chastised by the religious establishment because he sat and ate with sinners. But that's why Jesus came. He came to seek and to save that which is lost. What many weren't willing to recognize that were pointing their fingers towards those who were eating with was that they themselves fit into that same category. Everyone who's ever lived on this earth falls short of the righteousness of God. We're all sinners. We all belong at that table with Jesus. Now Jesus invited himself into Zacchaeus' home to have a meal, and that's in Luke 19. He was anointed at a meal by a sinful woman. And in Matthew 9, while Jesus was having dinner at Matthew's house, many tax collectors and sinners were gathered around that table with him and his disciples. And on this very night, almost 2,000 years ago, the Last Supper that Jesus shared with his disciples. And I want you to think for just a moment. As maybe at times you don't think you're worthy to be at the table with Jesus. I want you to think about who was at that meal with him on that night. Judas, the one who would betray him. Peter the one who would deny him, not once, not twice, but three times. And then there was James and John who were so prideful that they dared to demand that they have a place 
at Jesus' right and his left in the kingdom of heaven. And all on that very night in the Garden of Gethsemane ran off and left him alone. Don't ever think that you don't belong at the Lord's table. One of my favorite verses of Scripture is Revelation 3.20. When Jesus says to us, Here I am, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him and he with me. That invitation rings true even on this day. Jesus is standing there knocking on the door, the door of our hearts, to open up and allow him to come in and have fellowship with us, to share a meal with us, to share our deepest concerns with us. He is there to offer his grace, his love, his forgiveness that was paid at such a high price on our behalf. So on this night, my prayer for you and for us is that you would open your heart, the door of your heart, and let Jesus come in. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you that on this night so long ago, you were betrayed on our behalf. You were taken away to a mock trial. And then the next day, you were hung on a cross and took the sins of the world upon yourselves. Those committed in the past, those committed even right now as we speak, and the ones in the future. Lord, we thank you for the gift of life we have in you. We thank you, Lord, that we might honor you and serve you in the world around us, that we might offer your life, your love, your forgiveness, and your grace to all those around us. And all God's people said, amen. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Kevin Deckard. Very meaningful message. We appreciate your ministry and your service this night. And so now we gather around, and I'm going to ask you at home to prepare your bread, prepare your cup. But we're going to simply pause and give thanks. Pause and give thanks for the blessings in our life, the health, the safety, the comfort. For we know that some are not healthy. Some are grieving, and some are really struggling. We pray for those, but we simply give thanks that we have something to offer, that we can offer our gifts to God. We pray that we might be faithful with our, our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness. So we lift up our hearts and thank you, Lord, for your love that we are invited to this table here together. So I'm going to invite you to grab your piece of bread. For me, my favorite bread is tortillas. Yes, I said that wrong probably, but always plural because I can only, I can only have one. So um, my favorite bread is tortilla, tortillas. And uh, Reverend Kevin Deckard has a, a bagel, so you might have chips or you might have goldfish or you might have bread yourself. But just as God fed the people of God in the wilderness every day with manna, and just as God feeds us every day, and we simply thank God for our daily bread, we thank God for this bread today. And so now take and eat, remembering how much God loves us so much. Now I want to invite you to look around at your table. And see what other people are eating. And rejoice in them that you have your friendship, your fellowship, your family together. And now if you'll grab your drink of choice. Mine happens to be a Diet Dr. Pepper. Whatever your drink is, we give thanks for this drink. And thank you, Lord, that you love us so much. That you sustain us, even through this nourishment of bread and cup. And so as you look around your table, maybe just do a virtual clinking of the glasses as a toast. 
to God's love together. So let's drink to God's love. Finally, we give thanks, Lord. We give thanks to you for your love, that unconditional love that we can experience with each other around the table. We experience in the ministry of your church and we experience through that grace that you have for us. So let's pray. Lord, thank you for the families that have gathered around the table. Thank you for the bread that has been eaten, the drink that has been drunk. Lord, thank you that you are with us and your love abides in us, with us, and through us. Lord, on this holy night, we remember your love for us and that feast that you provide for us every day. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and all of God's people said, Amen. Our closing hymn is hymn number 558 if you have your own hymnal. The words will be printed on the screen. We are the church. I am the church. You are the church. We are the church together. All who follow Jesus are around the world. Yes, we're the church together. The church is not a building, the church is not a steeple, the church is not a resting place, the church is a people. I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together. All who follow Jesus run around the world, yes, we're the church together. We're many kinds of people with many kinds of faces, all colors and all ages, who from all times and places. I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together. All around the people, all around the world, yes, we're the church together. Sometimes the church is marching, sometimes it's bravely burning, sometimes it's writing, sometimes hiding, always it's learning. I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world, yes, we're the church together. When the people gather, there's singing and there's praying, there's laughing and there's crying, sometimes all of it saying, I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together. Because some people received the Holy Spirit, he told the good news of the world to all who would hear it. I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world, yes, we the church together. I would like to thank our staff for being so adaptive to all the changes and our wonderful choir, wonderful leaders, our, our amazing media team, and Cub Cooker. And I want to tell you, we had big plans for tonight. The four Amarillo churches were going to come together and have a play and have very special Holy Communion. We're doing the best with what we can, and I know that your family is doing the best with what we can. So as we close the service, I'm going to say a prayer, and I'm going to invite you to have a moment of silence, wherever you are, to center your heart. These things at this time might have been nothing that we planned, but God is with us, my friends, and God's love is here. So on this holy night, let's close in a word of prayer.
Lord, thank you for the mystery of your love with us. Thank you that we have fellowship. We can eat together and drink together. Lord, may we remember this night your love even in betrayal, even in devastation. That your love is unconditional and forever. And now, as the people of God go forth in peace. And may the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, and the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ be with us all. Now and forevermore, and all of God's people said, Amen.